Peter Pan and Wendy. And Wendy's. Wendy's. <laughs> Wendy's. Yeah, right. there you go. Peter Pan and, <laughs> it's a Peter Pan and Wendy's review. Peter Pan and Wendy's. Peter Pan and then Wendy's. Yes. I took a Peter Pan bus to uh, Wendy's. Um, and it was... <laughs> okay, that's it. That's how we're starting. <laughs> <laughs> peanut, P- Peter Pan peanut butter. Pe- well, I would have killed me, so <laughs> I oh. took a Peter Pan bus. <laughs> All right, Lost Boys, how you doing? Hey, oh, I just I just realized he's in an appropriate Rusty's in an appropriate green outfit for for the mm. occasion. Appropriate how about green. that? I don't have any yeah. Peter Pan related merchandise. I, surprisingly, so we're recording this on May the fourth. So I I wore my only like bit of Star Wars. Even better, it's, it's only part of this shirt too. It's Star Wars, Firefly, and Star Trek. But <laughs> um. And I'm wearing Stitch, but, uh, so I'm, yeah. I'm Disney related. All right, so okay, there, there you go. go. Cool. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter Pan and Wendy is here. Um, yeah, I went to uh, I went to Wendy's. Uh, Peter Pan took a Peter Pan bus to Wendy's, uh, so we're here to review that. Mm-hmm. It was pretty good. Mm-hmm. It was a decent Wendy's. It was clean, uh, fine establishment. Um, fine establishment. A fine establishment. It, fine eatery. The, fir- the um, first. So we're not reviewing the 2023 movie. We're reviewing the Peter Pan movie in the first half, and then Wendy's food review in the second half. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Which Peter? So which Peter Pan movie? That's the thing. Is this? Are we going to talk about like the, the 1953 um, the 1953 film. classic? Uh, or we could talk about the. So I've heard like a lot of people talk about the 2003 version, like a lot. I, and yeah, I've never seen, seen that. So I, we've we've just got to get into this we gotta get okay. right now okay let's yeah. do it <laughs> so either zach or alec i want to hear your high level thoughts about this because the 2003 movie is gonna come back up I'll yeah say that okay. I, t- from what i understand from fans i remember girls that i in middle school that i really liked really loved that movie like they were like unbelievably into that movie and i was like i, I don't know he's just some pretty boy i don't know whatever big um, fans but jason isaacs was in that um as uh george darling and uh captain hook i want to see that just knowing that alone now i want to see that um but high level thoughts um i found this movie extremely confusing um extremely dull lifeless boring and like a giant therapy session through the whole thing and i really didn't like it um that's (laughs) pretty much yeah (laughs) beat for beat how i felt about it before i say anything else zach i'm curious where you're at with this yeah i'm similar unfortunately i don't we don't think we'll have a champion here for peter pan (laughs) but (laughs) what i did go ahead and do is i never watched the original the night before i actually watched the animated 1953 movie it's been a long time since i have i i i I love it it's very it's very fun it's very you know maybe some Maybe a little offensive stuff, uh, you know. I found it incredibly offensive. It was the 50s, so you can kind of like, okay, you know, it's a different time. But Disney was, ensures um, that they have a, a prompt before you watch the movie to say, hey, this know, is they, bad now. They had that. I'm like, I'm like, okay, so, let's yeah. see how bad this is. I'm like, oh, jeez. Yeah. That's pretty rough. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but I did I did yeah. find the original movie, movie pretty charming. Like, I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then like I did not like some of the changes they made in terms of like story, story um, decisions they made with the new one. So I guess it's not it's not straight up Peter Pan now. It's Peter Pan and Wendy. You know, it's not direct <laughs> direct um, reflection of the original, but you know. So so the original J.M. Barry play, I think in his revisions, uh, Peter and Wendy is one of the titles, or Peter Pan and Wendy is mm-hmm. one of the titles for it. Um, uh, it, yeah, because it has like a really long history of, is I think it was 1903. It was originally a play. He revised it a bunch of times during its run while it was uh, being produced. Um, it became very well known in the states uh, because of uh, NBC would put on uh, live TV productions of it in like as far back as like the 40s and the 50s. They would do that. Um, so the musical is is a is a version of it is fairly well known and well-established in terms of television history. Um, But then the 1953 Disney film came out, and I feel like that's more or less superseded a lot of that earlier uh, memory, the the earlier history of of a lot of that. Um, But um, in in any case, uh, 
Yeah, I almost felt like they should have called this movie Wendy and Peter Pan. <laughs> Wendy is such or, a... It's or, like, they, or they just go the Corella route, it's just Wendy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> or Wendy's. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, no, because like... No, no shade against... I thought actually... I thought the actress was quite good. Me too. Um, I thought she was very good for what she had. Uh, do you know who that is, by the way? I had to look it up. I do know after, after looking it up. The daughter of Paul W.S. Anderson and Mila Jovovich. Really? I guess the yes. eyes, for sure. I could see yes. the eyes. Yeah, Definitely, and yeah. Facial like, structure is very Jovovich. I was like, for where sure. do yeah. I know her from? She, she was a young Natasha Romanoff from the Black Widow movie. That was the <laughs> other thing that... We, I definitely saw her in. Uh, yeah, I knew I recognized her from something specifically, and I guess it was that. But, mm. um, yeah, she's um, she's there. Which is funny. I, I forgot that. Oh yeah, the, they married. They were married, and I guess that's. I don't know if they fell for each other during the Resident Evil movies, or how could they not? Uh, it was what? like what yeah. seven <laughs> movies they did together, yeah, or something. It's, it's true. It's true. Yeah. She was like the thing. So. I did, just having uh, Wendy be like this girl boss is just like, ah, I just, why, why does everything have to be that way these days? That's just like, I think where I struggle with that is similar to Mulan, similar to Ray in Star Wars. It's this all triumph, no trial where I wonder when you watch these movies as a kid, whether it's Hercules or it's something like Mulan, you see this struggle, you see this internal struggle they go through this journey they have to go through as a character where they struggle a lot they learn this valuable lesson they have to rely on other people it's not just all themselves that they're just born with this superhuman strength and i see so much of that some of that at least in this movie where i mean just talking about peter pan for a second from the first time he's on screen to the very end of the movie he's just this crying whiny little baby of a kid (laughs) that you look at you look at the two compared to each other I mean, just actor to actress, he looks like he's an eight-year-old boy to a 15 to 16-year-old, like, young woman. And I think the allure of, like, the Peter to Wendy romance is that there are these two people, like, obviously Peter has a lot of maturing to do because he's been this, like, young boy ever since he has gone to Neverland. That's his whole shtick. He doesn't want to grow up, yada, yada, yada. Wendy doesn't either. But, like, they both kind of somewhat grow simultaneously aside from each other. They they, they can learn from each other in, in, in various ways. And I just feel like for the entirety of this movie... Wendy had had to either completely cons- console like this young boy who was struggling and crying and upset all the time or just step in and save him from Captain Hook, the main villain, when they had this weird – I mean talking about for a second to interject this Captain Hook and Peter I guess were friends and then he went away and then grew up and you know <laughs> – I, I don't know. I just didn't understand the whole like meaning behind the original Peter Pan to this one where yeah, it might have just been called like Wendy in a similar way to Cruella because – Wendy was the superhero from beginning to end, and Peter was this young boy crying most of the time. He literally died, and then like, <laughs> like I hated like, that scene. By the way, that was, that was yeah. Really oh, awful. I hated it too. Awful. I hated it too. Like, <sighs> oh, and Peter Pan. I didn't like Peter Pan as an actor either. Like, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't I, terrible. <laughs> yeah, I felt I felt kind of bad because it was like I think I read it was like introducing him. So yeah. like this is like his first yeah. sort of big thing, and I'm like. Ooh, you maybe get a little more practice first. Like, uh, th- like that's a, yeah. it, that's a big, those are big shoes to fill. Like yeah. really, I, I think, you know, and uh, he was fine for what he, I just don't, I almost felt like the script was against him. Almost like the acting decision decisions. Sure. But like making Peter this sort of like mopey, it just, it just felt so off. Like Peter's Dead. supposed to be Peter's supposed to be boyish and and proud and and mischievous and boorish and like a little boy. He's supposed to be and and not like and yes, that's not saying that like little boys don't get sad sometimes because they do. Let me tell For you, sure. as a little boy who was sad a lot, I, <laughs> I felt that. But it just it just didn't feel right for like the rebellious side of Peter Pan, which is like that's the whole thing that appeals to Wendy at all like that's that's why she Mm -hmm. finds him interesting and alluring because she doesn't want to grow up she's like she she'd rather and like that's that's sort of where that initial spark comes from it's like why she's so sort of taken with him and yeah it just it just felt so confused it was like but so it was like okay so she's kind of has that but then for the most part she's pissed off at peter for being kind of a a little a little brat which is like fine you know because he is but like it was just like it was from the get go. She was already sort of not really into him, like in Even terms of that, like, like initial bedroom scene. I was just asking myself, like, 
why would you even want to go with him? Like, <laughs> what what about him and the journey he's promising sounds alluring at all? <laughs> I don't get like, the hype. It doesn't come, I, I it doesn't doesn't come through the on the screen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just didn't get it. Oh, well, speaking of not getting the hype, Neverland looked awful in this movie. <laughs> Terrible. It was, yeah, it was not magical. Up. It looked like a rainy day in Ireland. <laughs> it looked like the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I was there last year, and I'm like, yeah, that looks like the Cliffs of Mar when it was too foggy to see what was beyond my toes. <laughs> like, that's that's kind of what they were depicting. Yeah. And was- also, I like the sepia tone <laughs> environments of like Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Yeah. Like, I don't know why we were trying to replicate that. Yeah, it was weird. But that like, just does not – that's not Neverland. I, I think uh, it's funny because, like, people were pointing out I, – I was reading some some Reddit comments about it, and people were pointing out, like, David Lowry just likes green. He did Pete's Dragon. That, that movie looks green, and it has a big green dragon in it. You look at some of his other, like – his other movies have, like, a lot of, like, green landscape in Ireland. And then the Green he Knight. Also, he the Green Knight. Green. <laughs> yeah, movie literally called The Green Knight. Um – yeah, so it's just like David Lowry just likes green. It's like, yeah, you can tell, but it also just like it looks like the camera's smeared half. That's just, yeah, it just looked dull and boring, and it wasn't Neverland. Like I, I, I expect to be whisked away to a magical like environment. Which yeah, reading about, it. yeah, exactly. I want to be swept into a magical world, and from mm-hmm. what I understand, that 2016's Pan was pretty bad, from what I, people say, but like. Most people say visually that movie was actually pretty cool because it was it popped with color. Mm. Um, I forgot. Even though it was sort of like gritty reboot, sort of kind of uh, like uh, sort of thing. But this this felt like more like gritty reboot more than anything else. So yeah. it was just like, oh yeah, this, uh, Peter Pan's sad, and so is Captain Hook. <laughs> They're all sad. <laughs> this, <laughs> I didn't like, get it. Hook does not have pirates. one happy thought. He could not think of one happy thought. Very sad man. No, yeah. it's like. Because, like, wasn't... Because I thought the thing about Disney's hook was, like, he was very, like, proud and very, uh, like, fashion-forward. Like, he was always very, like, clean. And, and this guy... And and they, they just made Jude Law look like he stepped out of bed. Oh, um, yeah. I didn't, I didn't like his look. Yeah, I didn't... I yeah. didn't like the, this this portrayal of Captain Hook at all. Mm-mm, not at all. Um, it, the, it's too bad, because I, I feel like I could tell that he was having fun. yeah. But, he was giving it everything he had, like he, yeah. like the, the line delivery, like the menacing look, like clearly, it wasn't for lack of effort. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was script writing or what, but there was something missing. He's just in the wrong movie, I think. Like, this is not. <laughs> yeah, yeah kind of. Do you know? You know what? Immediately, what I thought because I knew Jude Law was playing Hook, but when I saw that. Alan Tudyk was playing George Darling. I was like, I want to see that movie. I want to see where Alan Tudyk is Captain Hook. That sounds amazing. He so would be amazing as what Captain they did, What Hook. they did to George Darling is unfor- unforgivable. It uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> well, part, part of the whole, like, Wendy not wanting to grow up is that her father, at least, in the two... So this is where we're going to make, like, a, a little, I guess, aside for the 2003 live-action adaptation. My sister, very much like the the girls in your middle school or wherever, Alec, my sister was obsessed with Jeremy Sumter, who played Peter Pan in the 2003 <laughs> Peter Pan live action adaptation. And Jason Isaacs, you guys are going through the Harry Potter movies right now. Lucius Malfoy, like he was not only Mr. Darling, but also Captain Hook. And to see that dual personality of Wendy seeing, I don't want to become my father, who's so hyper fixated on his job. He doesn't stick up for himself. He's just boring and uninteresting as a person, and then she goes to Neverland and she sees, and she doesn't make this connection. It's meant to be this subtle realization that her dad in real life is this dull and interesting person that doesn't stick up for himself, and then in Neverland, he's this guy who does stick up for himself and is this pirate, super interesting, has this bravado, whatever. And to your point, Alec, like as a super fan of Firefly and other things that that Alan's been in, A Knight's Tale being another one, to see that dual personality to go from... Mr. Darling, kind of just dull, uninteresting, whatever, to pirate. Like, him as a pirate would have been so fun. It would have been so much fun. It would have, it would have been a better movie. It would have been a different movie, but it would have yeah. been a much better movie. Um, because I, this movie just forgets to have that fun. That's it what does. Peter is. to be fun. Yeah, because in the animated film, the George Darling is, like, freaking over-the-top, like, Poppycock! Yes. Poppycock! I love when he said poppycock. That was a big, big moment for me. 
And he he's not even in the movie that long, but he makes an impression, right? He does. I didn't hear one poppycock from him. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't hear, not one. But I think that's like beyond Mr. Darling. I don't think beyond Wendy, any character makes an impression in this movie, yeah. whether it's the Lost Boys or the Tiger Lost Lily? Children at this point. Ty, Tiger Lily, maybe, but like. So the problem I have, I, I actually, I felt like they did what they could with the what you have. You cannot portray the. You cannot portray the. I don't actually remember. They had an offensive name, whatever the tribe was. You can't portray them the way that you did in 1953. I understand that. And I actually really like the fact that she spoke Cree. I thought that was really cool. Um, But I was also like, all she really is is just like a car. Like, if you think about it that way, she is just the vehicle at which to, to like, she brings them. She's the getaway car, basically, like throughout the whole movie. And that's like all she really is. And it's a little, that's a little weird, I thought. To, To sort of piggyback on your point also back about like the, uh, the portrayal of, of with Jason Isaacs playing George and uh, Hook, that's actually a stage tradition, too. The mm-hmm. actor who played George Darling was also cast as Captain Hook. And the, and the, again, that's a sort of subtle thing to be like, that's what Peter is also rebelling against, a father figure. Like that's and, and it's like his fight against uh, uh, against adulthood and against growing up. Like and so that's supposed to like already just itself be a connection to the audience to understand like that whole thing and it's like no we we can't do that he's got to be he has to be an old friend who grew up and and peter was a a huge massive jerk to like yeah apparently because he came back and he was like yeah you're you're not a lost boy anymore go away and i was like oh that's kind of (laughs) sad (laughs) peter pan was like completely in the wrong here i feel feel like he's just i'm not really rooting for peter pan whatsoever He, he i mean so there is there is a tragedy to Peter Pan, right? That and that's sort of like the, that's sort of like the subtle one percent of the play that like, th- that's sort of the point is that it is kind of tragic that Peter Pan never grow that like never wants to grow up. Like mm-hmm. it's and that's Wendy's realization that it's a good thing to grow up. Exactly. Um, like the whole play starts with the line, um, "All children except one grow up." Um. And like that's that's supposed to be that's the tragic undertone. Yeah. On top of an extremely amount, of, like a lot of fun. That's that's the the it's a fun story. Um. But this is just like oh let's let's make the whole thing sad and we'll forget to have fun but we'll just make it sad. Um. The the only time that I felt like the movie was remembering to have fun, and I really didn't. I was kind of sad because I like Jim Gaffigan, but he was really dull in this movie, which is weird. <laughs> yeah, which is also sweet. weird. Correct. Which is also yeah. weird. <laughs> But the fun part of the movie was when there were sea shanties. That was like the movie felt like, oh, it's like, oh, this is like kind of fun. And then it's, and then they would stop and then I got sad again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me talk about um, one decision in terms of like the personality of a character changing that I did mm. not approve of also is Tinkerbell. And what they did with what they did Terrible. with Tinkerbell, she, Tinkerbell, oh. she could have been great. I mean, she she did fine for she. All she was in this movie was just emoting, like it was just, just cut to her and shrugged. she would make an emotion or yeah. like. But in the original, there's this great dynamic where she's like jealous about of yeah. yes. Wendy with Peter, and I actually really liked that. It was like fun and playful, and she was really just hated Wendy. And this movie is a complete 180, where they like immediately like each other, and they have this whole bond. And in the end, she's like, "Thank you for." take or caring to hear me or whatever you know and it really didn't do anything for me like tinkerbell especially in the early scenes in the original made for like a lot of fun the fun moments to really throw you into the movie and she just didn't have get the chance to do any of that in this it feels to me like they like almost like they're going so far as to be like well we don't want to we don't want to uh, um, depict women as uh, jealous or or bitchy or sassy so instead, what we're going to do is we'll double down on what people on the stereotype of what people expect women to be nice. Well, so it's like, yeah. OK, so by avoiding by avoiding one thing, you then do something what I would argue is much worse. <laughs> they, um, they avoid the jealousy thing. And they also <laughs> avoid the actual the fact that Wendy was going to straight up kiss Peter Pan in the original. And instead, yeah. now, uh, now she doesn't want to kiss because, you know, she doesn't need a man. And, that, and that's okay. Yeah, she don't need but no she, man. But she's going to give yeah. a thimble. This is a kiss. All right. And then that's a fun little callback moment later, right, that we loved. It just didn't didn't work for me. I thought it was kind of cute in the original. 
Um, because then that's when Tinkerbell comes in and basically stops them from actually kissing. So it's not like you actually yeah. you, they actually just kiss straight out the gate. It's just a fun little moment, and then they, we keep pushing. Yeah, I just yeah, I mean, yeah, I didn't, I did not like, I did not like Tinkerbell at all in this either. It was she also just like it was a weird CG. They like they did yeah, a lot of CG it, stuff. There was one. Yeah, there was like one time where it like focused like way in on her face, and I was like, why couldn't we have just used like the actual just the actress's face for this? Why did we have to use the CG render? And when, it looks really bad. When Peter up close, Pan was so. falling, right? When Peter Pan was falling, they showed Tinker Bell move in with the CG like in her face. It yeah, was the most noticeable yeah. for me. Yeah, um, yeah, she just didn't get a chance to shine. I'm sure the actress would have done fine with it if they gave her opportunity to, to have some fun moments. So in in my uh, I I've never watched Blackish or Grownish, um, which is what she's the actress is most well known for. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen a lot of shade thrown her way. I don't I don't think she's a very popular actress uh, with a lot mm. of people. <laughs> so I don't know. I I can't say I can't speak you to that first say. and foremost. You can't but, say um, on this movie like all she did they just made her they cut to her. They did. Like, she mm. did nothing. She mm. she had nothing. She basically was just like pantomiming the whole time, and it was very weird and. Yeah, I mean, I just why can't we have why can't we have Tinkerbell be like sassy and and precocious and jealous? What's yeah. wrong with that? I just don't understand why we can't have, like everyone just has to be like you know you no know, girls can't have flaws. They're perfect the way that they are. Yeah, I that's just sort of like the what's been regurgitated by Disney for the last like decade or so in terms of I'm and I'm just kind of tired of it. Um, I look, I think it's I think it's fine to 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 like tell young girls like who maybe don't necessarily have like all, all the most positive messages out in the media, you know, like positive role models in the media. I think it's good mm-hmm. to like reinforce like strong female characters, but like this is like the strong female character is now just like a a, a one-dimensional monolith and that to me is is like I I feel like that's more damn you know hot take maybe i feel like that's a lot more damaging than what has come before because whatever came before we like i would say people parents have been dismantling that by talking to their children for the last like 20 30 years but the thing is is like it's not even just messages for like girls that are like that like we've been making our way in our house we've been making our way through a bunch of the pixar movies Mm-hmm. And so many of them are like have that sort of like Brave had that message. Which I guess that's for girls. But Cars Two had that message as well, where it's like you're fine the way you are. The world around you is the what the things need to change. And it's like no, Mater's a terrible kind of person in that whole movie. Like he he's not intentionally like destroying his friends or or, or just inconveniencing his, his friends. But everyone else has to learn the lesson that we have to uh, c- uh, cater to him. And mm-hmm. he's, there's nothing wrong with him. We just have to cater to, to him because he's fine the way he is. And then uh, there was another one that had like, there was another one in the this mid 2000, the 2010 section, which had the same sort of message. And it's like, it's just, I, I'm just tired. I'm tired of it. And like, it's okay to have flawed characters and for them to learn something. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't know. I, it's weird. I just, I just think it's weird too. Mm-hmm. Like that. That's that's the insistence of the message that we have to give our to give our children, and I don't like that message for children. Yeah. I don't think that's good mm-hmm. or healthy. <laughs> and I have a couple yeah. other things I wanted to point out specifically. Um, the uh, this is a random thing, but the little boy with the bear. He is also significantly less cute than he is in the animated movie. He has like the cutest voice in that movie. He's almost like mm-hmm. he's similar to like little version of Luke from Haunting of Hill House, like how he's got like the glasses and okay. he's so cute in that one. He's got a lot more. He just pops a lot more in the animated movie versus this. And then the two brothers are Is just kind of there. Yeah, John and Michael, I think. Yeah, the two brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're just kind of there. I I also thought it was dumb, like when they they did that whole the Lost Boys, except there's some girls there's here. Some girls, yeah. Because it's. And it's like, well, okay, but that didn't, they didn't do anything with it. They didn't even give the lost, the lost boys like names or anything. Like none of them I think were. That's, that there, there lies like the problem with just the characters across the movie for me is like John and Michael, you just talked about a bit, Zach, like they're defined by props. 
the top hat and the bear. There's no, there's no scene you can point to where they had a moment. And in a similar way, the Lost Boys, they don't have names. They don't have distinct personalities. They're just there. They're character dressing. Yeah, doesn't Michael at one point, I think I think about the Pro-ZD video, which is the r- reminding me of the climax of that film. Doesn't Michael say, cleave them to the brisket at one point <laughs> in the last fight? In the original? <laughs> he does. This little, this little boy says, cleave them to the brisket. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I would, they'll have like little one-liners but to be fair even in the original they're kind of like boiled down to like you remember them based on their top hat and the bear but yeah. one, one time the d- little but boy does go Ooh. I would say cleave them to the bri- cleave them to the brisket I would say is more of a moment than whatever they didn't get any moments really in the, in this yeah, other yeah, than, yeah. Sure. yeah yeah I want to point out two things one was the soundtrack was really weird um, oh, I really, I, I really didn't like that at all. There was like the weird where it's like, well, we're gonna have this really cool like version of 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 Tiger Lily and just be like really cool. It's like it, well, Native American she'll speak Cree, and then it was like, and then they had like stereotypical like chanting, like like Native American howling in the background. I'm like, no, it's isn't that kind of like weirdly like not like I, that just felt like very strange to me. Like a isn't that sort of like going against what you're trying to do um the other thing that i wanted to point out was maybe one of the worst uh bits of editing i've ever seen in a movie uh and that is the circle dissolve oh yeah the the circle dissolve dissolve was i was shocked i like i started yelling at the tv i think my (laughs) housemates probably thought i was insane because neither of them were watching it with me i I could not i had to rewind it because i thought i would make i thought i was seeing things it's like so after they rescue john and michael um like peter like flies back up there's a lot of weird like quick cuts oh he, like he I gets think... back up and then and then when he slaps him and then she like oh, she like gets on a huff and then there's a circle dissolve to the same scene <laughs> where they're walking now yeah. but it's the same scene Oh, okay, that stuff. Yeah, and, like, and I'm like, yeah, you, what? That's not what you. That's that is not that is not what you do. That is not the time for a circle okay. dissolve. <laughs> no, it wasn't okay. A circle <laughs> dissolve is like it's like a comedy edit. It is, and like I guess they were kind of trying to make a comedy <laughs> edit there, but it it was not. We did not work. That was not the appropriate moment for. Like almost, I was joking with my. Uh, I was joking with my housemates because I showed them afterwards. I was like, "You have to see this. This is the this is the strangest thing I've ever seen in a movie." Um, and I was like, "I almost feel like an optical flip would have worked better." Yeah. Um. It, I mean, it wouldn't have because th- that's like almost exclusively used for TV. But um. But that's that's another comedy edit. But it's like it's like it to me. It was almost the equivalent of doing that. Yeah. Um, oh God! It was yeah, I couldn't land yeah, at all. Anyway, didn't land at all. Much, so much like so Wendy bad. at the end, did not land. Not land. Never, yeah. never land. Huh? Never landed. Never landed. What were you going <laughs> to say? Something rusty. There, there were just two specific things that stood out to me. So first of all, when my wife and I started watching this movie. We watched thirty minutes of it, and she's like, "This is bad. Let's take Scooby for a walk." This is and bad. Like, okay. Let's get out of here. So we yeah, took our please. dog for a we took our dog like the beauty of Disney Plus, right? So we took our dog for a walk. We came out, we 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 made some supper, we sat down, like, let's keep watching this. We watched 30 minutes more of it. We're an hour in. She looked at me and she's like, I I can't finish this. She's like, I'm gonna go upstairs. <laughs> I'm not obligated. I'm out of here. So I said, if, yeah. well, if you're not even gonna want to finish this, have you seen the 2003 live action adaptation from Universal Pictures? And she's like, No. And I said, I'm gonna rent that from YouTube for three dollars right now, and we're gonna watch that. And she loved it. And because, again, I, I've seen the movie like 20 times because my sister watched it every single day growing up. So that's an aside. But while we were watching the movie, when they're flying from their house to the the um, the clock in London. Big Ben. Yeah. Big Ben. Watch that scene again and tell me that's not a complete copyright off of the main Jurassic Park theme that John Williams scored. Uh, Rewatch it. That. Yeah, I was I'll have, wa- to, I'll have to. I have to. I was go back watching and- it, and Lauren's like, "This is, this is Jurassic, the Jurassic Park theme, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, no, it totally bum, bum, is." Bum, 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 Straight up, <laughs> like it is the Jurassic Park theme. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know how it got <laughs> through, but it's there. And then the second thing on bad editing. So first of all, they only show the crocodile like once in this movie, which yeah, that's weird too. I guess it is what it is. But they're in that cave, right? <laughs> and then after all that stuff kind of finishes up 
Peter and all of the kids kind of like grab his his leg or whatever and they fly up. Rewatch that scene too because they <laughs> they cut to the top of the mountaintop and they're flying vertical and then there's this straight up like jank PS2 like a game that Pete Dore would play where they're <laughs> flying vertically and it just moves sideways really quick and then goes back up. Like oh, it's no. not pur- it's not purposeful. It's just straight up jank where they're flying <laughs> vertically. They move sideways and they go straight up. It's so like jarring and bad. Uh, it's crazy. I- it's crazy how Disney's known for their polish in their animated movies, and then you go to live action. Suddenly, jank is their their niche. They love it. Yeah, bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. I don't know. I I don't. I, yeah. Boy. Okay, a couple more things. Oh, that was another thing. <laughs> oh, okay. I was gonna, I was gonna mention the clock tower thing again too, because yeah. I thought that was like, I thought that was cool. It was like one it of was. the, it was one of the visually more interesting things. Um, I feel like I just, I definitely prefer like the more traditional. They just start flying because to me it was like, it was like, oh, we just we're warping now, and then he's like, second star of the right, yeah, straight yeah, up to our exactly. morning. Exactly. But I was like, but you're warping there, basically. <laughs> so what does that matter? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. So, yeah, so, but anyway, so there's a moment where Smee is telling them like not to break these rules, right? They have this huge list of rules, and he's like, "No, don't, don't say his name, don't break that rule." And then he goes on. We go on to find out the rule forty four is no children in Neverland. So I'm like, "Why are you caring about these other rules? Like they're not. They shouldn't even be here." You're telling them don't break <laughs> the rules, but they just break the rules by existing. They're they're children. And then, yeah. and like, <laughs> this is... it was very cringy to me. I'm like, what is going on here? Uh, so yeah, Smee didn't work for me. It's so crazy how all the characters that did not work for me for the most it part. Just... Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I, th- I. I felt I felt sort of bad because I felt like, like this was like would be like a fun thing that Jim Gaffigan would be like, hey, I'm doing this. You know, my kids can watch the movie. You know, and it's like. Oh, oh! But he's just bad. He's just—he's just really kind of oh, no. mopey and weird and not yeah. funny. Captain! <laughs> no, there's none of that in this movie. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there was one scene also in the original where there's mermaids involved, and that's a fun scene that's not in here. But um, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Me. There's there's mm-hmm. a scene where like Wendy basically almost like falls in the water, and like the mermaids are like you know they're freaking aggressive. And then, and then Peter Pan was like, "Oh, you're only having fun, right?" They, they were just playing, having fun. And the the mermaid's like, "Yeah, we were only gonna drown her." And that was always funny to me. It was a funny moment. <laughs> missed that. We missed out on any funny moments in this movie, unfortunately. No, yeah, because they were the mermaids were just nice. We see them briefly when they're flying over. That's right. The water, yeah, yeah. and they were just like, "Oh, here they are. They're real nice." Oh, okay, every. Uh, and the movie girls is, are just nice. And the movie is too long, period. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it's always like every animated like film that. when they make a live action remake, it has to be longer. It's like we have to stretch this puppy out, and then they yeah, it always does then, not end yeah. well with how they stretch it. To, you know? to essentially mm-hmm. end with a message that uh, everyone misses their mom. It's, okay. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, like, I guess, like, that's the thing. It's it's so hard to figure out, like, what the exact takeaway is from the movie. Like, what is the yeah. message, really? I don't that know. It's because, like, Peter goes back and, like, reconnects with Hook, and it's like, okay, so Peter's, like, not really a tragic character anymore. Who is? What's going on? I don't, <laughs> I just, Hook's, it's and so. Hook's whole backstory is different in this movie, too. Like, yeah. yeah. In the original, right. he's only mad at Peter Pan because he cut off his hand and and fed it to the crocodile, the, which is. I, I feel like that's a pretty reasonable reason to be to be mad at somebody. <laughs> but it's a completely different yeah, exactly. story here, where it's like he was name was James, he was a boy, and then he banished Peter Pan, banished him for missing his mom as he do, and uh, even though Peter misses his mom too, yep, so it's like, yep, he's okay. full of it. But yeah. and that was and that was the whole other thing. That's the whole thing with the Lost Boys. Why they want Wendy is because Wendy is a mother, and that's like that's why they that's why they like are like yeah you can be you can be our mother. And she's like I don't know anything about that. <laughs> it's like, but here it's like oh but there's already girls there's already girls here with the Lost Boys. So like I can't why aren't they looking to them to be their mother? Yeah, and and like yeah, I think I think yeah. the whole if memory serves, there's a line in the play or the or the musical, the stage production, where it was like. Uh, 
girls were too smart to fall out of their care. So girls couldn't get lost because exactly. like the lost boys could yeah. because they're too they're too smart to fall out of the their like carriages basically. So boys yeah, are too mischievous; yeah. they'll they'll get up to no good. But girls are too smart to to be lost, and like that's that's simplistic, but it's kind of like there's like a wry dark humor humor to that. That's mm-hmm. just like again, it's just like no, no we're not doing anything with that. Yeah, yeah I just, did see you know. a couple of comments where it's like ironically, bit by including these lost girls, it's basically saying like they're dumber than the other girls, you know? They <laughs> yes. <got> lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so um, anything else, Rusty? <laughs> no, that's about it. I mean, I think like Pinocchio before this movie, we pretty much hit on it. I just, I don't think this movie had an identity. I don't really think it knew what it wanted to be. And I think it also strips the original from all of its kind of meaningful parts and those fantastical elements of the allure of Peter Pan and Neverland and wanting to go to this world and escape. I just, this movie loses so much of that. It just never really commits to anything. And all the characters, the, the characters just are kind of stripped of their personalities. It's just very boring. It's dull, as Alex mm-hmm. said at the top, which yeah. is sad. Do if a movie's going straight to Disney Plus, does that mean they don't have any faith in it? And like, is that a sign now? <laughs> Isn't it weird that they would do it with with a director like David Lowry, like who's like his films are very polarizing. Uh, I'll give you that, but like he's kind of like a a, a little bit of like a, a, a critical darling at least. So isn't that kind of weird that they would they'd just like, ah, let's throw his movie on on uh, Disney Plus? I don't know. I mean, um, me and me and Rusty liked uh, Lady in the Tramp. I don't know if that's the common opinion, but the past two movies back to back. I don't know. I, 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 I did not Disney like Lady Plus, in the Tramp. Disney straight to Disney Plus, and they're not good. So I mean, if we have one more Disney Plus exclusive, I think that's a definite uh, pattern to track. If it's bad. Yeah. Well, I will say. Regardless of Disney Plus or, you know, straight to Disney Plus, I really enjoyed Pete's Dragon. I don't know if either of you have seen that movie. I, I've yeah. heard really good stuff about it, actually. Yeah, I, I have really heard that it was actually it. pretty good. Super wholesome. I think it's it's filmed well. The acting is pretty spot on. I mean, it's it's really well done. It's a lot of fun. And if, mem- if memory serves, I think the main the lead boy was somebody that my nephew knew. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um. Which is, I thought was I, if Mary, I could be remembering that but in, incorrectly, but I seem to remember that my brother saying something when Peace Dragon was coming out that like that oh yeah uh, a, a, Abel knows Abel knew the like lead boy in that like they mm. they interacted in some way I don't remember what exactly but um, that's really cool yeah. well, in one of the lead songs uh, I, I'm a big fan of Lindsay Sterling but she was able to oh. kind of like, to write a song for the film which was really nice. cool how that was kind of interjected in the movie so it's just a lot of fun which I feel like is completely absent from this movie we just watched. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Lady in oh, the Tramp is fun. It's fun. So I had fun with that movie. Yeah. yeah. It so was, before, yeah, yeah, I will say, I will say, <laughs> looking looking fun. at that, that looks like a masterpiece <laughs> yeah. compared to everything else we've been watching. I'll give you that. I didn't, I didn't really like Lady in the Tramp all that much, but like, yeah, it, way better than any of this. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you that. So before we go into scores, I would like to ask. Is this movie better or worse than Pinocchio, which is the last movie we reviewed, Disney Plus movie? I would say it's better, but mm. I still wouldn't watch this again. Mm. Same. Um, I think it's. Yeah, I would say like I didn't. I didn't hate me. it. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't personally hate this movie, but I also because there were uh, basically the uh, Mini Jovovich stole the movie. Basically, she like she kind of did. The, she was great. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, interpretation of the character aside, she's a good little actress. Um, I, she's got she's got some some good years out of her, I think. But um, and I can't say the same to like any everyone was phoning it in. Yep. In Pinocchio, so <laughs> so yeah. at least you have to give like I, <laughs> I give I give it at least that. Yeah. I think for me, and I would encourage you both to do this: pay the three dollars, rent the 2003 live action adaptation of Peter Pan from Universal Productions or Studios, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's watching that movie right after I watched this was just another reminder of like how bad this movie, tru- <laughs> this is... how bad this movie truly was. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I really, I really should. I mean, it it looked. I will say it looks magical. I'll give you that. Like I remember seeing like like a trailer for it back in the. Like way back in the day when it it's came a out, lot I was of like, fun. It's like it looks like you know it's magical and it looks like... and 
Coldplay's clocks plays in the uh, the actual trailer of the movie, so that's just another reason <laughs> I why I was, <laughs> I was a little bit fan of it. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah. I feel like I have a feeling I would have thought this movie was like basically nothing to me if I didn't watch the animated movie. But now, having watched the animated movie right make- before it, I can see like things that I didn't like that they changed. Also, so it probably didn't mm-hmm. help. I think, well, that's why I found Pinocchio, because I, I hadn't watched Pinocchio a lot, uh, like, recently, but I watched it a lot growing up. Um, I can't say the same with Peter Pan. I only saw, like, maybe, like, once or twice, like, a total. It was not a movie that we had uh, on VHS, so it wasn't a movie that I saw very frequently. Um, so I feel like if I had watched it more, I probably would be a lot more offended by it, but I was already kind of, like, it's just, it's dull and lifeless, and what I remember of Peter Pan is that it is not that. It is an extremely fun movie. And we're yeah. just, we're gonna keep hammering that nail till they change it. That these these live action remakes are are soulless. What's going on here? Something's gotta give. Did you did you see the did you see the movie posters for the Little Mermaid? <laughs> so Lauren and I were watching Survivor last night, and we saw a commercial or a trailer for it, and like Sebastian was talking, and I was just like, "This looks <laughs> the the this movie." Looks... Oh, the movie God. poster with Flounder on it looks like Flounder's dead inside oh. and outside, actually. Um, I feel bad. <laughs> it looks so I, bad, you guys. I, I feel bad. My my girlfriend's looking forward to it so much. Like this, this is her like most anticipated movie. Like she and she loves Halle Bailey and everything. And uh, I think Halle Bailey, she's got an amazing voice. I'll give you that. I oh, think yeah. I think I think if she carries the movie, if she can carry the movie. But I just I'm very worried about the CG I mean, stuff. I, this is the yeah, thing that's that is concerning. But you think at least yeah, her voice might be able to like put it above some of these recent ones at the very least. Yeah, and, yeah, and make it uh, palatable maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, so. Uh, All right. But we'll see. Fingers crossed. That's the next thing on the horizon for for us in terms of uh, reviews. I think together. So we'll see. Um. What score would you give it, Alec? Uh, this movie's getting a four for me. Four. Um, I is boring, mid, uh, lifeless. Mini Jovovich again, very good. I thought she was she was good, um, but she can't carry the whole movie, unfortunately. And uh, especially when a movie that has Peter Pan in the lead, uh, the lead of the thing, and I feel bad for that kid saying it because he's a, kind of a new actor, but man, he was not very good. And uh, um, I would not follow him uh, anyway. No, goes. no, no, absolutely not, absolutely not. Nor, nor that Tinkerbell either. I would, I would be scared. I'd be more scared by her than anything, to be honest. But <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. There's just all kinds of. It was like I said, it's confusing, confusing messages, and like I, I just don't, I don't understand the point of these anymore. If there ever was one, yeah. other than just to make money, but like you can't be making money with with this when you throw it on Disney Plus. There's no way <laughs> people are not people are not buying a subscription to watch Peter Pan and Wendy. Um, <laughs> you know, so it's like, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Oh yeah, I can't wait to get a Disney Plus account to watch this. And Pinocchio. <laughs> oh boy, oh, it's sad. Let's see what score. What score do you get? So literally at the top of my notes, overall bad four to ten. That's that's what I put at the top of my notes. Four to ten. I thought Alex was gonna maybe come in at five, but yeah, I was locked in at four. I gave Pinocchio a three. I do think this movie does some things better. That's really relative. I mean, I just. Yeah. Like Alec, like you've said, Zach, I'm never gonna watch this movie again. I wasn't thinking about it after I watched it. I little it took everything within me to go back to it because my wife said after an hour, I'm not finishing this movie with you. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm not doing you know, any reviews. So I'm L- Lauren here. Lauren is such a trooper for sticking it even in that long. I'll tell yeah. you. It's like, so... I was like, you're Tarkaron, I have to finish <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, you did it for us. That's that's so mm-hmm. kind. Yeah. Well, I, well, I will. I will tell you this. I'm ne- never going to watch it again. But I am going to uh, show people that editing thing for the rest <laughs> of my life because I'm like, you need to see this. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's just so bad. I can't. I can't yeah. get over it. And now, can I have to go back to watch just to hear the Jurassic Park theme in there? So do it. Please. Yeah, we are going to have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> um, so yeah, last time we were all in sync with threes for Pinocchio. This time. 
We're all not in sync. I'm giving it a three. All right. Okay. Wow. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, Zach had the extra offense for having watched the classic right before this. So nice. I feel like if we had done that, yeah, I probably would have. I probably would be down there with you. <laughs> I almost feel. Yeah, I mean, Pinocchio. I didn't have that at all. So this is. I was like, let me try a different uh, perspective here. Uh, so what is that? What's that Tarkron score for us? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that average is. Like um, three six six three seven five or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Four plus four plus so three, three. Point, three point six seven. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tarkron yeah, but don't trust the, don't, don't trust don't trust the guy who has to do this. Yeah. For, for his job. <laughs> for living. Yeah. I was just adding. Three, I was yeah, thinking the wrong six, numbers. Six. I was like, oh, there's two. I just assumed there was two threes. I'm like, what? All right. Yeah. Nope. You got it. That's not. That's not. That's not what happened. It's a classic <laughs> Tarkon a... score of three point six seven. Um, oh, no. <laughs> classic. <laughs> if ever, if there's ever been one. Is that a unique <laughs> score? Is that a unique score? That doesn't exist. I, don't know. I think it might be. I think that might be a unique score to us now. Oh. <laughs> it's hard to get this. Yeah. Not a good point... way. No. It, Come on. You could bump it. You could bump it up to a three point six nine, right? Can you do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, I tried. So yeah, rough rough trend for us recently. I mean, hopefully, hopefully the next one's a little better. You know, it's rough out here. A little mermaid's next. That's only like a month away too, which is which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah. Which really does feel like they just dumped this because they didn't know what to do with it. So mm-hmm. it's almost like I think we really need to start with. Yeah. Well, they shouldn't have. This, no. Yeah. It shouldn't have. No. A waste of money. Waste of money. What were, we, what were you about to say for us? Say something about they, what they should have. I said what we should, should start doing is going back and reviewing some some of the good ones. Jungle Book, yeah, and these. Too, I've I've never Cinderella. seen Aladdin yet. So Cinderella. oh okay, Cinderella. I, I thought it was yeah, Chris Pine. Cin- good stuff. Cin- Cinderella was quite good. Um, and um, wasn't it actually? Wait, wasn't it James Marsden? Oh, it was you're right. Yeah, yeah, Chris Pine was in Into the Woods. I think. Into the Woods. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, yeah. Dumbo was awful, but I think that would be a fun one to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, uh, yeah, I was bringing that up. Uh, I was talking about that, the, just Disney live action stuff. And then someone mentioned, wasn't there Dumbo? And I was like, yeah, my friend Zach saw it. He said it was awful. And like, that's, that's a clear, like, would be, it would have definitely been straight to Disney Plus now. It's I like, saw that in theaters. I saw that in too. theaters, yeah. Oh. oh, no, you both saw that like, in theaters. Imagine seeing Peter I, Pan I, and I Wendy in theaters, it. you know? It's, Imagine, yeah, imagine if we had to go to the theaters to see that. Well, Lauren was like a huge fan of Dumbo growing up, so we went to the theater and we all drove separately. Ryan was there too, and her mom like got out of the car with like Dumbo plushies that she gave all of us for coming. <laughs> no. it was, like, this, this big moment where we all got it's... to like relive a childhood thing for Lauren, and everyone walked out and was like, "That, yeah, that was bad." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're throwing your plushies in the trash. Yeah, um, no, I still have them somewhere. But yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I hate Dumbo now. <laughs> Look what you did. That's a classic movie uh, where it was like it's a short movie and they blew it up like three times the length and uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a monster. Yeah, the original Dumbo is like sixty minutes, I think. <laughs> yeah, something like that. It's like sixty minutes long, sixty-five, something like that. Which is so. where it should be. Yeah. You know? All right. Yeah. Well, that's that's gonna be it for now. <laughs> uh, Rusty, what video would you recommend our viewers watch in the meantime? So not a favorite across the board, but I would favorite for me is even strong words to say, but much better than this. Go and watch the Cruella review. I think it's oh, yeah. at okay. least a little right. bit better than this. I would say, yeah, um, so I would much prefer, even though this. overall, I don't think I didn't like that movie like a ton, but I liked it a lot more than this. I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The third of the movie that I really liked, I was amazing. And I wish I would have taken that whole the whole movie of that. Um, and so I hope they do that with whatever, whenever they make a Cruella too. Mm-hmm. I hope they, they double down on the Devil Wears Prada stuff because that that was awesome. That was like yeah. my favorite part of the movie. So, <laughs> <clears throat> Rusty, thank you for joining us. Where can everybody find you? Of course, always a pleasure. You can find me the Otaku Brothers podcast on all your favorite podcasting platforms. You can also find me on Twitter at re lewis twenty eleven. All right. Ooh. All right. Well, and everybody, thank you for watching and sticking it through with us. Um, if you enjoyed this review, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and if you do, we'll be sure to read it in the next episode of the Dark Round Podcast. All right. All right. Hit the notification bell and click the link in the description for our social media. All right now.